All right, everybody, let's get started. Today's, you know, hopefully yesterday's uh, training session was valuable to you. Um, you know, today we want to really dig in deeper on, you know, now that you're able to get rapport, now that you're able to, you know, start to just be aware of your, your, uh, your ability to mimic, mirror, and match, now that you're able to master your introduction, your intro starts to get you in the door. You're, you're now in, and you've asked your first question. Well, now it's all about how do we get them to really answer these questions that we have. That's the game, because the questions in the script will open everything up for you to find perfect candidates for your boss. So how do we get your questions answered is what we got to look at today. So let's dive in here. The skill of a power prospector, which is you, this, this program, a power prospector, is the ability to ask great questions that open up real, real conversations that allow us to figure out how to help them. That is the game. All we're here to do is open up great conversations, find out what people's plans are regarding buying, regarding selling, their real estate plans, you know, moving, what's happening with their life, so that we can figure out how to serve them. That's it. Super simple. The problem is, you know, is these are personal conversations. Getting people to answer our questions is a challenge. So how do we ask the questions in a way that gets them to answer us, to pull them in? Because I'm pretty sure a bunch of you, you've asked a lot of questions of a lot of people, and they may not be answering. You're asking a lot of questions, and they're giving you a general, aloof, I'm not interested, I don't want to answer that. They're you know, sometimes lying to us. So have you ever wondered why people don't answer your questions? Why are they not doing that? So today, that's what we've got to address here. So here's why. Because we need to be way more interested. We need to be way more interested. And what I notice is, you know, because I've trained so many prospectors over the years, is we get a script and we just start going down it. So do you know anyone who's thinking about buying or selling in the area? Great. Well, prices have gone up, so we're, we're offering a free market evaluation. You know, which would you prefer? OK, good. You know, how long have you lived here? Where'd you move from? How'd you happen to pick this area? If you were to move, where would you go next? You know, what about you? Have you ever had any thoughts of selling? It's robotic. I don't want to answer those questions. This is not an interrogation. Right? Where were you on the night of the 15th at 11 p.m.? Who were you with? What were you doing? Right? So how to get people to answer our questions? We've got to get way more interested. <gasps> I really want to know. Your ability to actually sound like you care is in direct relationship to the answers you receive. Let me repeat that, everyone. Your ability to actually sound like you care about the question you asked is in direct relationship to the answers you receive. You're not satisfied with your answers. You don't sound like you care. You're getting into conversations, people just keep talking, it's because you sound like you care. Right? Does everyone answer your questions or very few? Dun, 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 dun. So how do we sound more interested? How do we do this? It is a skill. It's a very crystal clear skill. So everyone, we all can learn it, practice it, master it, have it as ours forever. And it's 93%. It's all about you. So what's the tonality of being interested? Critical. Hi, this is Patrick. I'm calling about the home. I'm for sale. Is this the owner? 
Good. I just wanted to find out, you know, you know, did you guys already sell the home or is it still available? Level of sounding interested? It's like a five. Hi, this is Patrick. Is this the owner? Great. The reason I was calling is because we saw the home came off the market. And we just want to know, is that property still available? Gosh, or did you guys end up selling it? Which one sounded more interested? That was all tonality, my tone. What about facial expressions? So when I watch myself speaking, as a good analytical, I make zero facial expressions, and I just speak, and my lips move, and that's about it. But as I, you know, squint, lean forward, you know, I, you know, I get my eyes going, I get my whole facial expression going up, I'm interested in this. You know, body language, how do you get your body in motion for your body to show interest, right? What about your mindset? You know, what's the mindset that you need to have to be interested, to create interest in strangers, people you don't know, people that are rude to you, people that are, you know, who are these people? I don't care. How do you care and start to be interested? What are the affirmations? We'll work on those at the end. One of my favorite affirmations, I really want to know. Gosh, I really want to know. Tell me. You know, I'm super interested in people. What we know is get your body in motion on being interested, and your mind will follow. Critical. Get your body in motion on being interested, and your mind will start to follow. And let's just remember that communication between you and I is made up of three things. Whoops. 7% is the words, not the works. 7% <laughs> is the words that you use. So you can ask a question, and you can have the perfect words, but that words only represent 7%. 38% is the tonality in which you express those words. So let's just so let me just give you an example. You know, hey, I, you know, I think you're really good. Hey, I think you're a really good prospector. Right? Versus, hey, I think you're really good. What was the difference there? I think you're really good. 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 Good. Same words, did they mean the same? The tonality, completely different. Now, if you are watching me on the video, I'm staring in the mirror and I'm watching myself, and it's funny because I'm doing facial expressions of, I'm not sure if you're good. Body language of, I'm not sure if you're good, versus body language that says, head nodding, smiling, hey, I think you're really good you know, really strong, like, forward motion body language that says, yes. So can you see that, man, whoa, communication is the 7 percent the words, 38 percent tonality, 55 percent body language. Can you see? That's why it says 93 percent, it's all about you. Right? It's all about you, not about my script. Uh-oh. You know, my father, who's you know, the most famous prospecting trainer, you know, he said, a script is a series of questions that leads the prospect to the desired end result. Just a series of questions. A close is a natural ending to a great presentation. That's it. And a great presentation really is just the script, a series of questions. So, you know, how important is it that we get really good at asking questions and getting people to answer? It's everything. So, how well do you know and understand the questions on the script? Remember, that's like step number two in mastering a script, which we've done all done that training. Step number two is to know and understand each line 
Why is that question so important? What is the objective of that question? What's, what's the responses that they're going to get? What's the perception of it? How do I have that script come alive is step number three. Right? The questions on the script are designed to create the conversation that allows you to know if this is the right customer or not. So all of those questions are 100% perfectly designed. So all we need to do is just to get the answers from the people. I call people up, I ask them questions, they either respond in the, you know, they give me the right response or the response I'm not looking for, the people that are right, we then set up a meeting and hand deliver them. That's all we do. But you can see if people don't answer your questions, you know, first in the intro as we discussed yesterday, if we can't build enough rapport to get them through that initial resistance, to get them into our series of questions, then this whole thing doesn't work. Okay? So Let's take a look at the skills of asking questions. You know, how do we deliver the question inside the script is critical. So we use tonality to sound way more interested. So we've got to work on that skill of tonality. Okay? We need to practice sounding like you care. Some of you, you need to practice that. It's like a thing. You know, so, and no one taught us that. Did anyone teach you to sound like you care? Like, did they teach you that in, you know, school? Did your parents teach you that? Did anyone teach you that? No, it's a skill that we've got to learn. You've got to practice, right? It's very valuable for your relationships, by the way, because, you know, when you start sounding like you care with your relationships, it kind of helps. <laughs> Pauses to create emphasis, right? When you know skills and delivering, quick, you know scripts. When we use the pause in a question, it's powerful. You know, Patrick, I think it's really important that you. You know, one of my favorite things. You know, Patrick, can I tell you what concerns me? You know, what specifically causes you to believe that now is not the right time? for you to set an appointment with us to view your property. Boom. Pauses. Whoa. Those are powerful. Now, I could have been like, can I tell you what concerns me? What specifically causes you to believe that now is not the right time for you to set an appointment with us? Well, same words, totally different outcome. Pauses. Huge. Got to practice those. You know, we're really what we're talking about here is developing your actor or actress qualities. You know, you guys all fantasize about being a famous actor or an actress. Well, guess what? These are the exact skills that they have to learn. How do you act out the script? Take on the emotion of the script. Take on the personality type of the person. Right? Use the tone. Use speak like them. Oh, mimicking, marrying, and matching. Interesting. All we're doing is practicing our actor and actressing skills. Right? That's it. It's kind of fun, actually, in the end. And adding drama into the question. Listen, so guess what I'm doing now? So when I do, when I call those expires, which I'll get back on the phone again tonight, right? When I ask that question of, you know, is this the owner? I have this full body, full facial expression of like, oh, is this it? Did, did I get a hold of them? Kind of like drama, like my shoulders are out, my, you, my whole body language shift. Is this the owner? I kind of have a little drama around. Oh, oh, it is great drama. And then I'm like, well, gosh, I just saw that your home came off the market. And I just was checking in to see, is that property still available? Or did you guys end up selling it? Dramatic. Notice drama that I'm adding to that question. And you know what's so funny is, you know, out of the 10 contacts that I made, everybody was fully engaged in the conversation with me. It's because I was adding in some drama 
into this whole thing, right? Well, okay, so you're not selling. Well, gosh, well, what happened? What are your plans for the home now? Drama, okay? Actor, actress, I'm telling you, this is how it, you get people fully engaged, right? This is advanced stuff, guys. Look, remember, you, you know, you can opt out of this. You can just, someone can give you a script. You can make the calls. If they respond, great. If they don't respond, great, and move on with your life. Or you can become powerful beyond measure by mastering these skills change the course of your life forever because you mastered these skills. Which one do you want to do? Using interested body language. Really important. I want the next time that you're sitting down with someone and you're having a conversation with someone and they ask you a question, watch their body language. It's because it's natural. When you're really interested in something, you naturally have body language of interest. Start noticing it in others. Notice when someone is on their phone, someone's having a conversation with you, they're, they're on their phone and they're typing away, and they ask you a question without looking at you, and they're typing away. Notice how that body language of zero interest, how uncomfortable that is, how annoying that is. How many of you guys have been irritated with someone? because you can tell that they were distracted physically from the conversation you were having with them and how irritating that is. You see, that's what we're talking about here. Body language of being interest. Facial gestures, gestures that show you're interested. And then of course, the thing that we've got to work on, major skill, is the downswing at the end of your question. Downswing. So what is, de what is the downswing? For those of you that haven't watched that video yet, the downswing represents what leaders and authorities use when they ask a question. So when you tell your kid to go to their room and clean their room, do you use an upswing? Go to your room and clean your room. Upswing or do you go downswing? Go to your room and clean it down. Which one do you do? Right? Because what an upswing does at the end of a question, it actually calls it into question. You know, I was just wondering if you, if you know, are, do you guys have any interest in this? Do you guys have any interest in this? <laughs> Hello. Do you have any interest in this at all? Do you have any interest? You know, are you interested? Upswing, upswing, upswing. Can you hear how like that's like ew? Versus, are you interested? Would you like to go ahead and set an appointment? Go ahead and give me your email address right now. Down. Go ahead and give me your email address right now. Up. Ew downswing. So to get your questions answered, you've got to take on this authority skill that has the downswing, which is kind of a command at the end. To do that, I usually like to take my, my hand like a karate chop and go down. Right? Everyone do that right now and just say, downswing, Patrick. Downswing. Do it. Karate chop. Downswing. Everyone, one, two, three, go. Downswing. You guys are all muted. <laughs> okay. Everyone unmute yourself on the count of three. One, two, three. Downswing. 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 Okay. And you know it's funny, as I was listening to all of you, I could actually hear who had the most body language in their what they said? Because there are some of you that had no body language, you just like downswing. And then others of you were like, downswing. Like you had full body language in there. And it was it was so easy to hear it as I was just listening to all of you. Right? That's the power of this. Right? You know what's amazing is we're just taking full responsibility. 
for being completely engaging. Right? Super exciting. So, <coughs> why are open-ended questions so important to us? Why is that? Can I, can I just get someone to chime in? Why are open-ended questions so critically important to this whole thing? It opens up the conversation. Hmm, thank you. Well, what do you mean by that? Um, well, because open-ended questions, you get answers that are not, you know, like one-liners, as mm -hmm. opposed to closed-ended questions, like you get yes or no's. Mm -hmm. And why is that so important to us? Well, because we need to get the prospects engaged, and uh, we need to have them you know, to build rapport and uh, continuous conversation so as to get to their um, motivation. Yep. So the, thank you, everything you said was absolutely correct. And I think the, just the super simple is, the more they talk, the more they talk, the better this whole thing is. Right? The more they talk, the more they talk, the more they open up, the longer they're speaking, the more rapport they're they're giving. For some reason, you know, I was in the prospecting school and there's so many times where the the client just kept talking and talking and talking and the the prospect prospector, sorry, the prospect kept talking, talking, talking. The prospector wanted to interrupt them. I would literally tell them to shut up. Just shut up. Like like I literally multiple shut up. L let them talk. And the more that they talked, the more that they talked, man, the more trust, the more rapport, the more respect happened immediately. So the open-ended questions to get them talking is just absolutely critical. So for those of you that are newer to the open-ended questions, they, they all have the who, the what, the when, the where, the how. And I wrote, use wisely the why. Why is a very confrontational open-ended question. So it's very, use that sparingly. Don't use that a lot. Who do you know that would be interested in selling? Who do you know that might be thinking about moving in the area? Right? What are your plans for the home now? When is the ideal time frame for you to make this move? Where would you move to next? How important is this move to you? What's important about this move? You see, the who, what, when, where, how. Those we need to practice and master and become masterful with them. You master that and you will be amazing. Okay? So, the game is let's be more conversational with the script. The question is the start of a new conversation. Every time you go to the next question on the script, it's not like, oh, I got to get through the script. Oh, I got to get to the next question. It's did I complete that conversation? Is that conversation done yet? And am I ready to move to the next conversation, which is the next question on the script? You need to be able to evaluate, are you proficient with the conversation of each question on the script? For example, if I ask the question, do you have any questions about values in the neighborhood? or what's going on with the local market. Most of you are not very good at that conversation. See, most of you get a lot of, no, not really. And it's mostly because you don't ask it really like you really are interested, like you have an expectation that of course they should. See, I have an expectation that of course they should. My mindset is, of course they should have a question. So when I ask that question, I'm like, so do you have any questions about values right here in the neighborhood or what's going on with the local market? Notice my tonality, my body language, the pause. 
my downswing at the end. Do you have any do you have any questions about values in the neighborhood or with what's going on with the local market? Downswing at the end. Now, when I ask that question, people <laughs> we could talk about that for an hour because I am very effective with that one question and that whole conversation. So your level of effectiveness with each question on the script, not only in delivery, but in understanding, and then of course having the conversation, repeating it, approving of it, maybe asking an additional question, maybe asking a clarifying question. Do you have any questions about values in the local market? No, not really. No, not really. Interesting. Okay. Well, were you aware that you know prices have gone up about 15% in the local area? And one of the services that we're providing is just providing a property market analysis for everyone in the community. So would you like us to just email you one? Or would you like to talk to Kai and Carly uh, you know, to find out a little bit more about what's the highest possible price? that you could sell your home for. Now, which one would you prefer? Well, I don't really need one. You don't really need one. Interesting. Well, how long have you lived here? Right? Well, how long have you lived here? Because I'm super curious. How long have you lived here? If you don't want a market analysis that's free, something's up. So how long have you lived here? Well, I've lived here for 20 years. Ah, 20 years. That makes sense. Right? Well, I'm just curious, you know, if you were to ever sell, gosh, where would you go to next? Ah, uh, we're going to die in this house. We have zero plans. Well, makes a lot of sense to me. You're not the ideal candidate for me. You see, it's like, no problem. But the conversation just guided me right to it. So each question is a conversation. That's how we got to treat this thing. The script is just a series of conversations to be had. Okay, so let's dive into the affirmations. You guys get the picture. So we got to look at affirmations. You know, the affirmations guide us to build these new skills, which are new habits. That's all that they are. These are just new habits: mimicking and marrying everyone, mimicking, marrying their hello. You know, being super engaging. You know, uh, at using the downswing. These are all just new habits. Affirmations are a way just simply to remind us of the habits that we want to practice. That's it. Right? They're not like any woo-woo, fancy anything. It's just a reminder. Ah, that's a habit that I want to gain. You know what? I mimic and mirror everyone. I ask great questions of everyone. I get super engaged. I sound like I care. You know, I use the downswing. I take the authority position. You know, people answer my questions because I'm super interested. I really sound like I'm interested. Those are just reminders to me. Patrick, these are the things that you need to step up, right? So the affirmations, which affirmations are, do you want to use from this point forward? I love questions. I love asking great questions. I get people engaged because I ask great questions. I use open-ended questions as much as possible. I sound interested. I get completely interested in everyone that I talk to. That one was a big one for me, actually. I used that a lot early in my career because I came off so standoffish. Even though I was mentally interested, physically and tonality, I wasn't. I would literally leave a party and you know like one I remember one time my girlfriend was like gosh like you're such a jerk I'm like what she's like you're so arrogant I'm like what are you talking about and she's like you just you know you're so rude to people I'm like how is that even possible and it, in my mind I was super interested paying attention to everybody, but physically, my face, my smile, my lack of smile, my body language was not showing interest in anyone at all. 
So in my mind I was, but physically and then my tonality wasn't, I wasn't speaking in a way that was, I'm super interested. And that was a big lesson for me because I was like, man, I thought that it went great, but everyone's pissed at me because they thought I was arrogant. Shoot, like that's not who I am. So I had to show it. Now I show it. People, you know, they love hanging out with me because I'm just, you know, smiling, engaging. I, my eyes show it. You know, it's funny. I was doing a training, and a great mentor of mine was like, Patrick, I could see that you're smiling, but your eyes aren't smiling. And I was like, what the hell are you talking about? My eyes? And then he showed me a video. And it totally made sense. I was like, oh my gosh, you're so right. You know, a lot of the smile is in your eyes. A lot of your interest is in your eyes. It's not, you know, it's I was like, holy cow. Now I'm fully like, ooh, like my eyes like really tell the story of what's going on. Like, whoa, do you see how powerful those little details are? Listen. People love talking to me because I ask great questions and I get super interested. Prospects stay on the phone with me because I sound like I care. I focus on using the downswing. I am powerful, so I use a downswing and people respond to me. Boom. So your affirmations are designed. So. Now that we've kind of gone over a few affirmations, what I want you to do is before you prospect, say your affirmations. Okay, and again, all your, you're just affirming the actions that you want to take. You're affirming the habits that you want to practice. That's it. So it's not any like woo woo weird stuff. Right? It's just a reminder, a reminder. I love asking great questions. I ask great questions of everyone. I get people, complete, people completely engaged because I ask great questions. You know, I use open-ended questions as much as I can so people start talking. Right? I sound like I care. You know, I really look at them and I stay focused on who I'm talking to. I use a downswing because I'm authority. I'm powerful. I get people to answer my questions because I care. I'm interested. I can make a difference. I believe in my service. My service has value. This is no big deal for them to just tell me everything about their plans on moving. And if they tell me their plans, I can help them. That's all I'm here to do. Boom. You see the mindset? Can you see that I've just trained my brain with these affirmations to be able to live this? You know, and I just want you guys to know if you guys would have met me ten years ago, geez, I was a you know, I could barely there's no way I can give you this presentation. I couldn't talk in front of a group. I barely could talk to girls. I was such a dork, right? Super analytical. No, ex no expressiveness at all, and it's all because I learned every skill that we've talked about in here. Now I get on the phone, go out there, door knock, who cares, I meet tons of people, create amazing results. I want that for you. So start creating your list of affirmations. Start chanting them, just like I do to yourself before you prospect. Do it while you're prospecting. Between calls, do your affirmations. Let your partners know what your affirmations are. Show off your affirmations. I have affirmation partners. My buddy does a whole list of affirmations. He does it in his phone, sends the text message to me so that he, you know, he just chants them every day. This guy's more powerful than anyone that I know, makes more money than anyone I know. He's doing affirmations every day.